Um, I want to thank Robert for pulling this together for us tonight. I think this is um, um, really an important um, bit of information that we all need to know, and it keeps on changing and evolving. So what I'll do is I'll introduce the panel, and, and off we go. To my left is Radine Salinas, who is a deputy photo editor at Time. Um, Time Out. Time Out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next to her is Jana Jawosk, who is creative director at Publicist. Mm -hmm. And on the right, all the way um, to the left, actually, is Joe Lombardi, who is a rep at ETC Creative. So what works, guys? I mean, how do we break through all the clutter mm -hmm. and all the bombardment of what you guys see all the time? What makes them work? Joe? So usually before these, uh, these <laughs> panel discussions, I always try to I always try to get present to things in my own life so that I can really um, sort of enroll you into the way that I think about things, right? And I've been a rep for a long time, been doing this for a while, so I want to just get you present to something really quickly. Um, the concept of how you do your self-promotion is kind of, is the, it, how you do your self-promotion is how you do your life. I want you to get present to that for a second. Let me share a story. So I'm in a leadership forum right now. And at the leadership forum, it talks about having breakthroughs in your life um, and how to create possibility for yourself in, uh, in the space of having these breakthroughs. And there's some really, really strict sort of rules that you have to follow to have these breakthroughs. But we're all committed in the leadership forum to actually having them. So one of the things that occurred to me, I had kind of a moment while I was in my forum um, this weekend uh, that I want to illustrate to you because it kind of speaks to the importance of why we're doing this panel today. So I happen to be gluten-free. Does anybody have any dietary issues in the room? Okay. Uh, that, believe me, I'm getting to my point. I, I happen to be gluten-free. I'm, I'm, I do it as a lifestyle choice. I'm also allergic to gluten. It's not good for me. When I don't, when I eat gluten, I get sick. It's a bad scene. So we're doing this forum. It's a 14-hour forum. Afterwards, everybody's like exhausted, but there's no real options in the area for anything that's gluten-free. We wind up going out to a bar. There's everything gluten on the table. I start eating it because I just don't want to be difficult. I don't want to be like, uh, tell everybody like, uh, you know, I'm gluten. I don't want to be that guy, right? So I'm trying to show up as- You're going to uh, be that guy in this panel if you don't get to yeah, the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to the <laughs> point. I'm going to get to the point. Anyway, I eat the gluten, um, and one of the members of the panel uh, that uh, the, the leadership forum that I was in looked at me and she said, you know, you kind of do gluten-free like you do the rest of your life. And I looked at her and I was like, what does that mean? She's like, well, you get sick when you eat it, right? And so you're kind of half in and half out. Like you, you need it. You know this is good for you. It's going to be good for your physical being, yet you eat it when nothing else is available. So it has an impact on you. And that's kind of how you have to be. That's kind of how I want you thinking about your self-promotion. You can't be half in and half out. Um, uh, how, how, many of your, uh, how many do you, of you have friends in your life that are important to you, that you want to be in, the con in conversation with and want to see or have dinner and coffee with? How many friends do you have like that? How many times a year do you, and these are really important people, maybe in distances away from you, how many times do you actually go and have that dinner and have that coffee and have that conversation? Not Once enough. a year? Yeah. Twice a year? They probably have kids that are growing up right in front of you and like suddenly the kid is like five years old and you're like, oh my God. Okay. Um, the, how many of you go to industry events and meet with people that you've worked with before? You have this amazing conversation. You make a real connection to them. You're bro both in agreement to keep in touch. We should do more together, for example, somebody might say. And then suddenly you don't get back in communication with them for like three months later. It's, it's kind of rampant. Everybody does it. It's, it's, uh, but I need you to get present to this, okay? Because right now, as agents and as photographers, the personal relationship is everything. Your marketing is everything. It is literally the lifeblood of your business. And if you don't do it consistently, you're not doing it at all. You're not getting your message across. Okay, so, Jana, mm -hmm. feeding off that, how does that work for you? And what promotions get through to you in that vein? 
Well, I'm going to answer it two different ways. I want to build off of something that you said about, um, about schedules and a commitment. So for starters, if you really, really, really love what you do, then you have to do that level of love across all facets. So especially in today's digital age and social media is rampant as a model for this is how I need to promote myself. So consistency between, say, your website, your social media presence, and your social media presence is whatever platform you decide is the one that's going to work best for you as a photographer and as the right platform for your visual voice. And if your visual voice is on Instagram is different than your visual voice on your website, there's a disconnect for me as a creative director if I'm looking at books. Because if you think about it, that visual voice on Instagram versus your website versus your printed promo is what you're wearing the day you show up for an interview. That's, that would be the equivalent. And if everybody says, oh, what you wear that day and how you act during that first meeting or interview, that's all you get. You get that moment. And if it's not consistent, if the visual voice on your Instagram is pictures of your cat, the coffee you had, um, the really beautiful sunset, and that's diametrically opposed to the work that you are in love with doing on your website, you've got two different messages out there. You've got two different books. And Jen, just so that would be one thing. So how do you get how do you make the connection oh I see him there I see him there I see him there how does that work for you as it relates to I could notice the difference okay well that's that's a good question because my door in as a creative director can come through Instagram my door in could come through a website because either somebody sent it to me or said oh you should check out this person or if I'm looking through say PDN because I was this morning the 30 under 30 came up and I thought, okay, let me just cruise through there really quickly. So my door in is going to be through different ways. And a lot of it is personal to build off of what you were saying and then something that you and I have talked about a lot. Personal is everything. If you do meet someone at an event and you make that connection, follow up, follow up, follow up. And again, it's hard to follow up because my personal experience right now at Publicis uh, North America is that we are in a, we are in an office-less office. So we, the, there's really no phone. You don't really have a phone. All you have is your personal phone. You, sometimes the printed promos don't get to you because we don't have the same mail system that we had when we had a, a different office. So, and then the emails that come through, um, that's still probably the most consistent way. So also knowing who you're trying to reach and what's the best way to get to them, that will help you when you're doing a direct contact or a direct follow-up. So, right. yeah. Yep, great. Very deep. So how do, we, how do we get to a photo <laughs> editor? Right, so then how do you get there? Yeah. Um, so a lot of our stuff comes through email, um, and we'll have people kind of reaching out to us to, to bring their books in. Um, and that is, completely honestly, is the easiest way for me, because then I can take a look at it when I have a minute. Um, I actually had someone call me today and I was like, can you please email me? Like this conversation is going to get lost in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, so for me to have like a, a digital physical record of it um, is really, really helpful um, because then I can kind of put that in my folder, like check in with these people. This is, this is what they sent me. Look at their website, check out their Instagram. I do mm -hmm. the same thing. Um, so that's kind of in a very short in. answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so is the phone a dead issue people don't have the time don't pick up is that something we should just walk away from and no no, <laughs> no okay. I don't so, think so so you'll you'll answer the everyone will answer the phones no no i think i think what's interesting is that building up of what you just said everybody has a different much like everybody has a different way of learning everybody has a different way that they uh, organize their mm -hmm. their world and you organize it the way you just described i organize it a different way you organize it a different way so when you do have that personal contact, if you make a connection, and the first question I usually ask, even when I'm working with somebody, I say, what's your best mode of com you know, communication? Do you want a text? Do you want an email? Do you want a phone call? Yeah. Let's, let's, you know, let's have a conversation about process, and then we can have the conversation about the work. Because then you know that the work is going to get there if you know how it's going to get there. Yeah, yeah. So Joe, you're in an interesting spot. You need to promote mm. to get to the creatives. But on the other side, people are promoting to get to you. 
mm-hmm. as a rep who wants to be represented. So what's, what's the program for you when people are reaching out to you for representation? Uh, in terms of the style of promotion, what, is that... Uh, yeah, how, how are they getting through to you? Or regular what? design pieces? No, I mean, what, what is the way to get through to Joe as it relates to I'd like to be represented? You've got to be memorable. Mm-hmm. You've got to be memorable. Risk is everything. We get, and art producers we surveyed get like 40 promotions a day sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for me, it's the, the amount of time that it takes me to look at the piece and get it into the garbage is as, as quickly as you have to grab my attention with the piece. So, and so that's what I mean about being memorable. Um, and you've, the piece have gotta, has got to take a risk. Like, I've got to see that you have, we're in a visual communication business. So all of those pieces, it's not just a great image. It has to be something that blends good design with an image. And like even, even from the, the envelope that it's in, you know, sometimes I want to get right to what it is that you're doing. So a clear envelope might work better depending on like what you've, what you've created. But really for me, it's everything is in um, the, the, when I get it, does it have impact immediately? And that is, that's everything. Anything that doesn't make me feel like you've taken the time to get my attention kind of does, you know. Does a personal garbage. note work for you, Jenna? You know, oh, yeah, you, you get that direct mail piece and is there, if there's something included in that, does that help? Definitely. Uh, it's a little tricky to answer that at this juncture because again, receiving hard copies of pieces is tricky at my current office, but yes. Personal is always personal is always better. Whether I've met you at PhotoWorks or wherever or here, <laughs> and there's a follow-up. Even if it's a personal note on the email, what you put in your subject heading also has, you know, that's that's your opportunity for personal personalization. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. definitely agree yeah. with that, um, especially the subject lines when it's hi. I'm like, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right. yeah. um, right. So that's something, and also harder for me to kind of. Um, I'm such a keyword searcher, right. um, so if I if I don't have something that will help me find you in my email later, that's mm, you're you're lost, mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm-hmm. But on a on a physical um, promotional material, I I really love things that are tactile, mm-hmm. um, something that actually like makes me spend time with it. Um, so I, I kind of like opening gifts. <laughs> so like if it has like some Look, sort I of happen wrapping. to have an example. <laughs> right, right. So we were just talking about branding earlier and who knows what this is? <laughs> Tiffany box, right? So you know that when you get this, that's gonna be a Tiffany, that's gonna be a gift from Tiffany. That's how powerful the messaging needs to be in your branding when somebody receives it. Especially if you're gonna do something that could be translated as gimmicky maybe, or it could be, you know, something that's larger than an envelope. I think that you really need to get the messaging really, really quickly. All right, so well, now uh, Tiffany mm-hmm. spends a fortune to do that. Photographers are of course on limited budgets. So what can they do to give you that kind of notice? There that kind of a win. Frank. <laughs> so a lot of my photographers, you know, when, if, when they first started out and they don't, they didn't have a lot of money, the best way, I think, is to do your research on designers that you love. Go on to a photoeditor.com. PDN had a recent article, um, and I have it, happen to have it here for you guys, um, on making promotional pieces that stand out by David Walker. I'll leave it here for you. But it basically names the photographer, the designer that worked with them, and a little bit of context around the project. Find a designer that you, that you like, reach out to them. Maybe you already have designer friends, but one of the, the key ingredients to getting promotions like this done early on is doing favors. For if you have a, design, a designer that's a friend that needs photography for whatever reason, put yourself out there. I mean, put it on the line mm-hmm. and create an agreement that like, if you come up with something really compelling for me, I'll work, you know, I'll work free on a project or, you know, work on something personal for you as a project. Enroll people in the possibility of what you want to create. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, can I build on that for a moment? Sure. I think what's interesting about the Tiffany's example is that the reason that we recognize that this is Tiffany's is because this color in this ribbon has been around for a really long time. So that to me speaks about consistency of message and whether that consistency of message is something as simple as your color or your color palette, or the fact that it's always in a box versus a bag. So think about what your consistency of message is, whether it's your, whether it's your signature statement on your website, 
on your Instagram account, on any of your promos, on any of your emails, your email signature, just go, excuse me, going across the line that that even when, let's take it even further, even to your physical presentation, when you do do an interview or you do a, uh, a book, you know, a book review, what, if you, if you choose color, do you wear that color? You know, just to think beyond how do I, how do I make somebody always associate me with whatever that design element is, regardless of whether it's color, a signature, yeah. your so signature it's a image, brand. exactly, whatever yeah, every, that is. Everything is part of the brand. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't ignore the possibility that that's that one tiny detail that might get you in the door or get somebody to say, oh, I know exactly who you are. And that's what you want. Yeah, and make sure that it translates across all of the platforms that you're using. Mm -hmm. If your Instagram feed it looks different than your promotion, it's going to confuse the audience that you're trying to reach. So really, yeah. if you create Pinterest boards right. around, you know, right. around your work, I think that also needs to be speaking to your brand in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And not even confusing. It's, I won't know the different. I won't know who that other person is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. It's too, mm -hmm. especially in, in the social media space. Right. If yeah. if everything has that one hook, then we know I like it or I don't like it, but it keeps on coming back. Right. Yeah. Hence the blue and the ribbon. Mm -hmm. I also think what's really interesting about social that I think a lot of people miss is that it's not about likes. It's about who is liking you. Mm -hmm. What connection points do they have inside your marketplace? Be on top of that so that you can see who they know. And maybe there are other art producers that you know are on their feeds that you might want to get in touch with or whatever, but know your audience because likes are likes. They're not, they don't translate into anything more than that. I mean, some brands that if you're building a 5.2 million following, you know, some brands might, you know, consider you to be their your brand photographer for social. But I mean, in terms of just your immediate network, you should know who's following you, mm -hmm. you know? Sure. So do any of you use LinkedIn as some type of uh, resource gathering? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a lot of people reaching out um, pretty regularly, actually. Um, and it's kind of nice to get a note from them about who they are and what they're doing rather than just, like, connect with me. Um, so personalize again. Yeah, they're not <laughs> selling at that point. I think yeah. they're more so like, you know, li LinkedIn through. is more of a business space, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And, okay. and you feel the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you want, you want a different type of message mm -hmm. when you're in that LinkedIn space. Definitely. Yeah, and curate yes. the groups that you're in. Like, be a part of groups. You know, mm -hmm. find groups that kind of fit. If there's a lifestyle advertising group or there's some kind of connection to your work that you can find, I mean, do your research. It's a vast space to market in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then the other thing is every single time you get an email from a client or somebody in the marketplace, and that could be a hair and makeup person or whatever, connect with them on LinkedIn. Right. Build your network in that space because you're gonna need those people eventually. And then from them, their connections kind of are become sort of your connections. So it's a really powerful tool when it's used right. Mm -hmm. Hashtagging as well in social is super critical. It is a way to find information that people need. It is a sourcing, you know, um, tool. So hashtags are super, super important. Don't just post a photo on your Instagram feed without really like right. looking at the relevant hashtags. Also, what's trending mm -hmm. oftentimes. Like look in your Instagram feed and you'll notice that the, at the opening of your feed it'll show you images that are trending with relevant hashtags that are trending. Start to find out what's trending on that day, in that week, in that month, and start using those hashtags powerfully. Because they are a search engine. At the end of the day, it's a search engine right. to find your work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jenna, what is your routine? You, you come into the office, do you go right to your emails? You know, what, what is a way that we can understand how a creative director operates day in and day out? And if, any, if you could share how people younger than us, mm -hmm. you know, work in that space as well. Mm -hmm. You know, what are their routines? Mm. You know, mm -hmm. if you can just shed some light on that. Mm -hmm. It's a really good question because every creative person has a different, a different creative process. And all of us here as creatives have a different creative process. But we, the one similarity, depending, regardless of your discipline, is you have to feed your brain. You have to feed mm -hmm. your inspiration. So it's about, you, you just, it just, it, you need to eat. And I call it, that's what I call it. I, I need to input. So I look at a lot of stuff and uh, the 
junior art directors that I manage, it's the same thing. So when I'm guiding them on a project, I'll guide them in different ways to certain ways to think about photography. Uh, for example, a project that I'm working on right now, uh, we're coming at it from a purely a lighting perspective. So we're not even breaking it down by genres of photographers. I'm strictly coming at it from, okay, you know what, think about the quality of lighting that you're looking for in this image and look for that. I don't care who it is or what the subject matter is, you're going to build your mood boards to present to the client. You're going to have a lighting board. So instead of starting with beauty or fashion photographers, because that's actually what we're looking for right now, start with lighting. So that's one process example uh, that I'm directing you know, one of my team members to take. I may come at it from a different perspective um, on a different project. I may think, oh, okay, you know what? I'm trying to balance this idea uh, of I'm cr I want to create these posters and I want them to have sort of a radical protest feel. What does that photography look like, feel like, smell like? And I'll go in that door. So everybody's got a different door, but again, I need to feed constantly. So I'm looking at websites, I'm looking at Instagram is huge for me. Pinterest, not so much for me, and that's just a personal thing. You would talk to any other creative and they might say, no, Pinterest is their door. Um, I also, a lot of it is recommendations. People send me, hey, I saw this link. You should check out this person. You should look at this. Sure. Uh, and you know, I, you just get it from a lot of different places. You never know where you're gonna get a really, really great window. So it's always, that's part of the fun for me is to find new ways to find new imagery. Right, and you, so you go to a spot and if, you, if the photographer is doing the branding right, you can find that photographer not knowing that you're in, you were going to find them again in Instagram or a tweet or wherever it was, but their brand, something, right. that hook again was right. the same right. and you didn't even know that they did that kind of work. Right, sometimes you do, yeah, so you're right. Once you make that initial discovery, how do you, your brand does need to be memorable in the sense that you then want whoever that is who's looking at your work, art producer, art director, editor, you want them to remember your work. So how do you get them to remember your work? Uh, so then that way the consistency across all your platforms is important because when I go back to my search, if you've got your list, <laughs> if you can immediately summon up an image when you see that name, then you all have done your job just beautifully. And that's that's the key. Or if you somebody will say, hey, do you, do you remember so-and-so? I'll say, oh yeah, I met them at this thing. And then I saw their work and immediately, and I remembered it because of either this really striking image because your edit was beautiful and tight, or I'll remember something else. So whatever that trigger is. And how about for you? Um, I'm trying to remember the initial question. I, I thought I of a lot to, of things off, off of yours. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be. Okay. Um, one of the no, things. What, what oh. is your routine? How, how are you sure, finding? Sure. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So one of the big things for me um, is is the recommendation, and sometimes that's really direct and like look at this person. Um, a lot of the times, um, the photographers that we use will um, will be like, "I can't do this, but here's my friend who." Um, so those are some that are are really great because you know that those people aren't going to like tarnish their reputation by giving you someone that they don't trust. Um, so that's a, a really big one. And um, I'm trying to think of where else I was heading. The routine. routine. Yeah. Um, How to get through to you. <laughs> Just keep jogging my memory. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, go, that, go for it. All right. So <laughs> other places to find photographers. Do you guys look at award shows? Do you look at galleries, editorial? Mm -hmm. Are you know are those places that you know you'll find someone that you may want to use, or that you you see imagery, you know, in a show, that you'd actually do the research to find out who is that person, mm -hmm. and what is their work. I find that there are now places that I'm that we're looking as a company that we never really looked before. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, do you guys know Design Boom or mm -hmm. things organized neatly, mm -hmm. especially for still lifers that are out there that are trying to really promote their work? There's some really interesting, and I have a list that I can share with uh, you guys at the end of this to keep it brief, but there's a list of really great blogs that, like, they'll talk about you. You have to curate the work specifically for what the blog does. So you can't just be like, oh, I'm a lifestyle photographer and I want to post this on things organized neatly. But you write a really short, concise letter to these guys and they'll do a feature on you. Um, 
And I'm, we're looking at places like that to find, because really those people that penetrate that level of um, walls, you know, defense walls on a blog are usually people that are like, they've got some resources. Like I want, that's smart. Like mm -hmm. if you're thinking, I want to know you. The other thing that I think is really important is to, you know, always putting your self promotion on, like Rob Haggard, a photo editor's blog, mm -hmm. he does like a promo, um, a promotional blog where, you know, if you mail him, your piece and kind of you know it comes as that piece he will if the piece is good enough he'll kind of take it apart and he'll show it in its component pieces and it's mm -hmm. really quite beautiful he's got a great feed on Instagram mm -hmm. for that so a lot of times I'll look on Instagram for like what photographers are sending stuff to Robin if they're not represented I'll be like ring ring you know I really okay. love, oh, I really you love your work that's fine. so that so that takes an incredible amount of energy to right. get through to Rob's blog Rob is but, really but generous. It, if the promo is good, Rob's really generous about it. He's and he takes the time to really photograph the piece beautifully, mm. and um, yeah, it's great. It's great promotion. And th those, are, I'm always looking for something new. I don't really want to, you know, workbook and the source books are fantastic. By the way, I'm not they're taking we, nothing away from source book advertising. Joe, I'm running this. I, I have questions. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Cute up. Okay. Sorry. And for you, Jenna. What was the question? <laughs> Sorry. What you know? <laughs> what is the you know? What is it that you know can come to you that will make you stop? You know, are you re or are you reading these blogs? You know, what are the other places to go? Okay. You know, that that penetrates, you know, your f um, your world. Okay. Well, that was two questions. The first All right, question take both. you said, yeah. what what makes you stop? And it always goes back to the work. If the work is amazing, that's right there. That's that's it. Uh, but where do I go? I go, I go uh, again, it's about feeding, feeding the beast. Uh, I will go anywhere. I will go to a gallery show. Uh, less award shows, books for me, um, okay. not so much. Uh, a lot of galleries, uh, newspapers, just almost anything. Somebody, Photo annuals? You know what, not even so much. Okay. Yeah. But if I see one and it's out there, I'm, I'm looking at it. So you never know. Again, you just, you really never know. But it's not anything I actively go out and look for. Frank, can I just ask yeah. one question? Because uh, this is mm -hmm. something that I'm super inspired by. Photographers that are also shooting motion. Do you have? Do you have any? Do you look for motion pieces uh, anywhere for that? Like integrated um, campaigns where you do. Uh, that's a that's a really great question, and it's a loaded question. And it deserves a big answer. But for the to keep us on track, I'll give a very short answer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we were going to get to motion, but now we're okay. in motion. Oh, we're in motion. I didn't mean to okay. move that forward, Frank. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, when somebody does motion, my first question is always, are you your own DP? So are you motion because you're a director? Are you, a motion, are you doing motion because you're a DP? Uh, so that's always my first question. And then if you are your own DP, I always ask how you manage the set. So motion's a big question because it's not just, um, it involves a lot more people and a lot, it involves a lot more uh, things. So it really also depends on what you're shooting. But then that's part of the process. You say, oh, this is great. We're, we're making some things. Let's, let's figure this out. So there's always, so there's no negative answer there about if somebody is their own DP or they're not, not their own DP. It's about you just have a different team. But it's still you as the photographer saying, this is my vision. This is my work. This is how I'm going to capture the work for you. Okay. Yeah. And do you get involved in motion f for the website? We don't. Really. We don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in the motion piece, Joe, how do you got? How do you promote your guys? Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess it's a little bit tricky. That are they still doing print? Are they doing motion? Are they mm -hmm. all the way here? Right. That was always you know for all Absolutely. the years. Right, right. The big issue. Right. Yeah. But it's, but nowadays um, don't we have more freedom to do both? Yeah. Right. I think I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think most art producers now are working in an integrated space where it's like they're really up mm -hmm. on, you know, motion, um, art, live action artists. Mm -hmm. right. um, and we promote to both the broadcast side of an agency and to the mm -hmm. art producers, just guessing that they probably will have an integrated mm -hmm. campaign. Um, when we promote physically to them, um, this is off of the you know e-card space or the the email space. When we promote physically to them, we um, will always send um, you know in the space of a promotion like a hard drive, which will be branded with the photographer's name on it, on the actual piece. And it's actually utilitarian to have these little hard drives, um, uh, these little flash drives. 
So we'll brand it with the color. This happens to be Jen's brand color, Jen Davik, our food photographer. Um, her brand color, you kind of plug into it. You'll get on that, um, on this disc, you will have her motion reel or all of her motion reels. You'll have a PDF portfolio of her stills work. And then you'll have a contact card that just all you need to do is click on it. It will import into your system and you'll suddenly have everything you need at, a, at your fingertips. And it usually will go with something printed in a lovely presentation and go to the, the creative. That's how we usually do it I'm in the, the physical promotion space. Other than that, we create web links, galleries that are really specific. And we're very careful to curate the galleries for specifically what the agency is doing. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to send to a broadcast producer, because we know that we're not a production company per se, but if we're going to do that, we have to make sure that we know what they're working on. Or mm -hmm something that's in, going to be inspiring out of the space that they're working on, but it's got to be really, really strong mm -hmm. and captivating. In general, right. where do you make the, the separation between a photographer who's doing motion mm -hmm. and a production company? Oof. That's a <laughs> tough one. Uh, it really depends on the job. But there's got to be a really space where you know, we really want something here, but we think we can get it here with this particular photographer. So then that's what you do. Okay, yeah. so, so I mean, you feel totally confident and you're able to convince clients we can go with this guy who doesn't have the production company but can get us what we need if it's, you know, things for the, uh, for the website. It depends, it depends on what the job is and it depends on how integrated. And again, that to me is just about how big your team is. So say if it is a huge broadcast job, you may have your, you have your primary director in their production company and then you'll have a subset and then you might have another subset. So depending, you just, you're just building your team in a different way depending on how big the job is, depending on how small the job is. Okay. You know, again, you tailor, you tailor everything. Yeah. And Joe, do you start to say to photographers, you better be looking into doing motion? You do, are you pushing them in that space? If a photographer doesn't have a motion reel currently and they solicit us with their portfolio, we will be less inclined to sign them or or we'll ask them, are you doing this? And if this is something projected in the next three months, we'll keep a heavy eye mm -hmm. on the photographer. But if you don't have a motion reel, I mean, almost all of our clients will have some kind of motion element to a campaign that we're working on. Almost all of them. And it might be, it, it doesn't, obviously it doesn't have to be broadcast, but it could be a brand film, you know, right. or something like that. Something that's just appearing on like the opening of a website, you know, of a client's website. Right. But whatever it is, there's generally a call to action for a photographer to have a, a motion uh, reel. And they'll ask. And a lot of times a photographer, a, a, a buyer, will, um, it's weird how it works. So sometimes a buyer will see a photographer's motion reel and never look at mm -hmm. the portfolio and just be like, ah, I can see the storytelling in this. I can, you know, mm -hmm. if there's overhead shots of food or whatever kind of panning across the food and if it's gorgeous lighting, they'll be, they, don't, they won't be interested in actually even taking a look at the stills um, of the photographer. It doesn't always work that way in the opposite. So like a buyer that sees like beautiful, gorgeous work in, in the still work will always inevitably request, can I see a reel if there's a motion piece? Mm -hmm. Doesn't work in the flip side doesn't always work unless so, the work so is So let a motion compelling. guy do still? They will, if they love the motion work, yeah, there's been times where the motion work has directed us getting the, the stills portion of the job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's how it used to be with the directors, right? Back in the day, oh, yeah. right, they would say, can you do some you know, print shots for us mm -hmm. yeah. right on the set? Yeah. Okay. So when you look at um, a photographer's site and you see motion, is there something in there that you'll go and see if it's a particular special issue that you're running in the magazine, that you want that field, not necessarily needing the motion, but is there any place for, you know, your world to see, you know, the value of it? Um, I, I don't dislike having it there. Like it doesn't take anything away from it. Right. Um, I actually, the thing that I look for um, in the motion side is the storytelling um, and and kind of the eye. Um, so they're, they're, this photographer, videographer is able to see a lot of things at one time. So that kind of proves to me that this person is looking and seeing and not just like snapping a photo. So that's something that um, I find really intriguing. Um, like you said, we don't, we don't get to use that in print. Um, right. but sometimes we'll have um, some web stuff, but again, we're, we're not quite in that video space. Um, 
but but it is it's it's interesting to see and I, and I like to see how people think and I think that uh, motion is a really good way to show that off so Joe do you use award shows as a piece of promotion do you encourage the photographers to enter them we and do. which are the which are the ones that you you know you want to win that is a loaded question, my friend, and one I will, before I get in trouble with all of the boards of these shows, I won't. Uh, I will say that we ask our photographers to participate in award shows that specifically feature if it's a portrait show, and we have a brilliant series of personal work for. Um, that's the other thing that I want to be clear on. Promotion should be for me. I don't know how it works, for how you guys feel, but I don't want to see something you shot for a client. Anything near that, like if I'm going to look at anything, whether it's a motion piece or it's um, a printed piece, I want to see it. I want to see your personal vision, you know, in it. But to back to your point about um, award shows, I, we just encourage you to be in every pocket as much as possible um, to be showing up in different places because you just don't know right. who's looking at what. But to your point about award, the, the, the right award shows, I don't think there is one. I think it really has to be designed, the, an award show that's perfect for that photographer in that genre. And do you get involved in the editing of what they submit? No, because it's their personal vision, and I respect it. I respect that if that is who you are and that's what you want to do, um, if that, that's the work that you want to submit, then I'm all for it. I, I try not to get involved with the vision side, you know, side of things. And Jenna, when looking at those books, you know, the award show winners, does that have value for you? It has value for me because I like to see – what that says to me is that it says that as a photographer, you're looking for every avenue and you're not afraid to work hard. You're not afraid to submit. You're not afraid to submit your work to, it's always hard to say, put your work out there and you know, ask people, hey, what do you think? It's just hard. I mean, let's just be honest about that. Uh, so that's always kind of a big deal is to say, you know what, I'm gonna pay my money, I'm gonna submit my work and if they reject it or they, I win, you know, it's, it's a risk. But that's, that's part of being a creative, so it needs to be done. Yeah. And, Radine, do you look at all award shows and the books and the Emerging 30 at, um, at yeah. PDN? Um, I don't find myself in that space a lot. Um, but when I do, um, I usually kind of find something that, that jumps out at me. Um, and then I go diving through the Internet. So, um, yeah. So find something that will kind of capture my attention and then and then I I'm interested in you and and I'll go and, and look right, so, so do you guys look at the magazines the editorial space yep. you know Vogue and you know yeah. if you're looking for Absolutely. fashion yeah. so so you'll all look there right Joe I mean yeah. you look there for a photographer if no question mm -hmm. no question yeah. and I think something that's really relevant that's happening at least in my at the agency right now is that I think the days of lifestyle photography where it's categorized as lifestyle and because everyone's doing it, it's an oversaturated segment of the market. I find that a lot of clients that we're working for in even the pharma space mm. it, are starting to look in pockets that are different than you know somebody that's you know saying, I'm a lifestyle guy, I'm a lifestyle, I'm a, I'm a portrait guy. They're starting to look in the pockets of fashion and beauty to find a lighting style, something that's like super compelling because the guys that have been doing Pharma, pharmaceutical type of advertising, pharma doesn't want that anymore. They want to be inspired too. And it's like everything's been done. So what are we going to try next? So I'm finding that a lot of creatives that work in the pharma space are really looking at like fashion magazines and looking at beauty, looking into the beauty space to find their people. People that can translate a portrait beautifully and, and deliver it in a different way, I think is, you know, compelling for them. And it's what's happening at least for us. Do you find the same thing? Well, it's, that always goes back to what what is your voice, and then how do you showcase your voice, and are you true to your voice? You know, do you do you decide? Well, I really like shooting lifestyle, and that's what sells. That style of lighting or photography or the way that I'm directing the talent, that's what sells. So that's how I'm going to shoot. Or do you say this is what I like to shoot, and this is how I like to shoot it, and then you go from there. So everybody's door in is different, and we have to respect that everybody has a different methodology about how they want to get work and the way that they want to get work and why are we even in this business in the first place. <laughs> so if you are true to yourself, you're going to find your door. Um, but I do think that, and that's why I do always advocate for me as a person, as a personally as a creative person, I am always looking for the opposite of what everybody else is doing. You'll ask any other art director and they all have a completely different answer. So. That's, that would be a question that I would ask every art director. Everybody's got a different process. 
Yeah. yeah. And as you say, question. So, so instead of waiting till the end, are there any questions now that we can just take a little break? And mm. do you have a question? There you go. Yeah. Testing. Okay. Uh, this may be too broad a question. I hope not. But I, I'm curious in today's market if black and white versus color is an issue. Is black and white more limited or does it not right. matter? It's really the work, whether it's color or black and white. Yep. Um, that's really my question. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's an issue at all. I mean, not for me personally. What about you? Um, I, we um, need to see color. Uh, so yeah. if you're shooting in black and white um, it, and it's beautiful, um, if I can come to you and say, show me some work um, that's color focused and, and everything lines up because your black and white tones might be beautiful, but the, the lighting on that color also needs to be okay. perfect. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But will that black and white shot that's beautiful get through enough to you to say, I'd really like to see his color because that shot right. is Oh, to yeah, definitely. Right. That's what, yeah, that was definitely. the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another question? Um, the role of an agent, all right, is actually, uh, I came out of the textile industry. It's a very important role. Very understood, no problem. But for some reason it seems like this, like, is there anything online we could look at so we can better understand the role of an agent? Uh, the role of an agent is a very important role. Sure. But to us it's like, what do you do? How do you do it? <laughs> How much do you cost? How do yeah. we find you? You know, that, why would you even, you know, what, no, but you, un you understand what I'm saying. Sure. Where do we find this kind of information? What, what I would suggest you do is probably join APA or ASMP, and they have a lot of information on that, you know, on that particular topic, and they have seminars similar to this where they'll have reps, and we'll actually tell you what we do and how we do it and why we do it and why at the end of the day you hate us. It's just the normal <laughs> process. But in, in all seriousness, there are plenty of, you know, clubs and organizations that can give you that information. It's all right there. Yep. Hi. Um, how often do, I guess you two, you're separate, a little outside. Um, <laughs> how often do you just go online, find a photographer that you like, just with their own website, their own social media, that you actually want to work with and, and hire or, you know, subscribe to or try to do business with? Is that very uncommon? Or is it, that's no. just the way you always work, that you find people that way? Well, it's not the way that it's always worked, only because I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, but, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Again, you know, it's, it's such a crapshoot. You just never know what portal your work goes through to get to whoever it is that you want it to get to. So you, you will reach out to that photographer and say, I, I saw your work. And... Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Or I have uh, my art producer do it. You know, so it's more official and all the rest of it. I will reach out to reps. I'll reach out to the photographer themselves. Sometimes I'll just send them a note saying, I just saw your work. And again, through LinkedIn, saw it. It was great. And we'll connect on LinkedIn, that kind of thing. So, sure. So you, you, you personally, you're dealing one more with print, uh, magazines, or what's your output? I do all three, actually. So broadcast, digital, and print. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's an interesting point to really capture in that you need to be in all these different places right. to, find, to find, you know, that creative director, that editor. Right. You know, it, it, it's it, how to, yeah. all right, so the only way to find you is for you to be in all these places, mm -hmm. and then we get to what our original comment was about the branding, that we see you here, we see you there, and then we see that you won an award show or you have an editorial spread, wh whatever it is. It's, and, and that's the piece that makes it so hard nowadays that you need to be in these other places and you need to do it with a rep or without or together because the rep isn't really the answer. You know, the piece that you get here, I mean, Joe is not doing every one of those pieces for every one of his photographers. He's, he may be overseeing it and, and guiding them, but that, you know, that, you know, it's long gone where it's just the rep. And that's, you know, that really is the challenge. And the thing that I find interesting as we're, you know, talking here, 
Like we didn't bring up source books and the workbook and all, and all these other things. You know, so we'll start, we'll get back to us now because it's all about us. Can I answer Dutch really quick? Yeah, yeah, go. Um, another thing for me is um, I'll, I'll reach out to um, photographers as well um, when I find their work and, and I want to use them, whether it's for um, something, a project that I'm trying to fill immediately or if it's something that I think might work in the future. Um, but also finding them finding your work on um, s on websites that are accessible. So there's a website that I know has this particular style and that's kind of where I want to go. Like, have you been on there? Like, who is shooting for them? Where does that lead me? Like, so what are your connections? that's editorial, right? I mean, yeah, definitely. In, 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 that, in this new thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for coming first. Uh, question is, what's the volume of projects that you're working on like say in a month, and then how many of the photographers that you end up working with on those projects are people you've never worked with before? Mm. So hiring a new photographer, how hard is that for you? Or how yeah. comfortable are you around that? Um, I think if the work is proven, it's something that we are willing to take a chance on. Um, a lot of times we do reach out to um, the photographers that we work with. Um, but they're not always available. Um, and it's also really fun to find new yeah. talent. Um, so to be able, I, this is something that I've gotten to do a lot at Time Out is just bring in new talent where I'm like, I found this person. Let's use him, and let's so use her. What is it about the website that gets you over the hurdle of that apprehension? Do they have to have a rep? You know, what, what, it, what sure. is it? Um, for me, it's definitely not the rep. Um, sometimes if you have one, it's actually more difficult because uh, our budgets are pretty small um, for some of the projects that we're working on. So then I'm like, oh, okay, well, it might be too expensive. I should find someone else who, who has their own business, essentially. Um, so that's one thing. Also, just again, like the work is proving that you're doing this well. Like it's not like, oh my gosh, I found this one good <laughs> image on this website. Then I'm like, ugh. Okay, well, let's see what else that person can do. Um, so if you can prove to me on your site that that you fit what I need, then I'll, I'll hire you. Yeah. Jenna, new photographers, how what's what's the process for you? Or the evaluation? Uh, well, I will always use, I mean, I'll use a new photographer. If the work's right, if the work is right for the project. Unfortunately, you shoot as a weekly, you're, you're just shooting all the time. Just the volume is amazing. And I wish I was doing that kind of work because I was like, oh, I could shoot with a lot of people. I don't shoot nearly as much as I would like to shoot just because the timelines are very different in advertising. Uh, so that, unfortunately, makes me a little sad. But whether somebody's new or not new, it's not, shouldn't be, it's not really relevant. It's more about, is your work good? You know? Joe, how hard is it for you to pick up a new guy oh. And get in that nurturing space. There was a, uh, we'll was get another question. Quote. He was just saying actual numbers, yeah, so right. like percentage-wise. Yeah. It's always it's always kind of new. Really. Well, yeah, yeah. The yeah. thing is, you never know how many yeah. shoots you're gonna have. Right. You know, month to month, week. You know, you could mm -hmm. be blasting, and then you can go two months when nothing right. gets approved, right. and then you're not shooting. Right. Right, I mean that happens all the time. So maybe yearly, mm -hmm. yearly. How many, you know, how many times would you new, use a new photographer that you haven't used before? Well, it's, it's if, really if you did fifty, based. if you did twenty jobs in the course of the year, how many could you think you could get in there that are new, never worked with before? It would depend on the project because if you're doing a pickup campaign, you may say, okay, we're going to use the same person because we want the same look and feel. Mm -hmm. If it's a new campaign, you're definitely going to use somebody new. Um, or, you know, it really depends on what you're, what you're launching. Um, that's probably the best way to answer that. Yeah. yeah similarly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions? Another so question? With, uh, so many different marketing channels these days, do you find the, the relevance of a printed portfolio has changed over the last five years, ten years? And um, mm -hmm. in relation to that, are you calling in less books? Are you awarding jobs without ever calling in a book for, for people? I and mean, do you find that's changed? Wow, that's a good question. Well, five to ten years, that's, yeah. that's a lifetime. I mean, that's a good question for <laughs> you, I mean, actually, because you're just making the boat. <laughs> <laughs> right? Always a printed portfolio, yeah. I say, because yeah. people love the richness of print. People love the richness of color. 
and the tactile nature. When you're meeting with somebody, an iPad just doesn't do the trick. I've been through every type of presentation you could possibly imagine. But the key is with this is you gotta get it right. I mean, I have pages in my agent. This is an agency portfolio that I take to meetings that I have privately with people. So I have a summary, five pages, five spreads of the best of the best of each of my photographers in both their, mostly their personal work in here. Maybe some magazine covers and things like that just for the for inspiration. And getting the printing right, like I'm, these are like, you can't, you could spill coffee all over these pages and it's not going anywhere, the, it's gonna bleed off. So do it right, print it well, update it regularly and get out there and show it. People love yeah. this. Yeah. So that, that house book, right? That's right. That, I guess that, my, my question was related more to, do your photographers have six printed portfolios each or do they only have two? Is there not, a smaller volume of shipping? Not necessary anymore. It used to be that I needed six portfolios. I needed one to circulate to catalog, one to go to editorial. I needed one to present with. I needed two just as backups, just in case the other ones were like, you know, out and not returning to me. It's not like that anymore. I mean, most clients want links. And if I can create sort of a, the link to the photographer's work, and if the, the link gets them, they're going to almost exclusively ask for a treatment thereafter. And then the treatment really needs to be yeah. super specific, super on brand, super on message, visionary, written beautifully. That's the way that it closes. But I will say that the printed portfolio in a meeting, I think is like, So we'll, we'll after, they, after they say they love the site, they're considering you and three other people to do a bid, at that point, does the book get sent as well? You, will they want Not that for usually. the final uh, decision? Not usually. The bu I mean, very rarely do I have the request to actually get the portfolio. I still get them. But I think it's really at the level of the treatment that it becomes a real, it becomes a real possibility, a real job. I don't, it's <laughs> rare that. But I will say the personal meetings to get us to even bid the job are usually had over coffee, uh, uh, you know, a creative meeting that I go to, a, a portfolio meeting that they take their book to. That's how you, that's, because you're taking the time. You know, it really shows, I just, I wanted to mention this before, just in terms of the promo as well. This is a visual communications business. It shows when you don't, when you're not paying attention to the details. And when a producer or a creative gets something that's beautifully crafted, a portfolio that's beautifully printed, they see the attention to detail and it translates in their head, especially art producers I've found, that like if it's that beautifully executed, that that's how it translates and how you're gonna shoot the job for them. So in some ways, all of the design and all the special care that you give to your portfolio and the printed piece translates that you care about the project at the end. So does, is everyone, um, oh, you have a question, go. Sorry. How often do you use, say you get, you get called for a job, you have a job out there, how often do you have to hire a new person or a person to do that specific job, or can you actually work from the work that they've done already? What, what's the split? In other words, somebody, you need a travel promo for, I don't know, Johannesburg. And then you, you know, somebody's been there, how often do you use, I'm sorry, how often do you, how often, I'm not used to this, how often do you use their work that they have already or you have to assign them and pay them and hire them to go out for a new shoot? What's the split? You know, I'll, I'll answer that. Yeah, that's go. That's actually, that's relevant to, you know, budgets are shrinking, as we all know, just shrinking. So a lot of times it's not, it's, it's much more common now, especially in my world, to, if I find a photographer that does really beautiful work and it happens and it's in the mood board and the client says, that's amazing. <laughs> Sometimes we do, in fact, use something from their, um, uh, their library, so to speak. Uh, and then other times we say, oh, but wait, we need more. So then do we hire them and we shoot more? But it's not... It's, you know, it's kind of, that's a, that's a give and take, but having that library of images and being willing to work with an art producer if they call you and they say, hey, did you shoot anything else along these lines? Because sometimes I'll get those libraries and, I'll, and we wind up buying from that photographer from their library. So it's more, it's, what's the split? I'm just curious. Just like, mm. It's really hard to tell you. I can't give you a number. That's a, that would be a struggle. You photographers are all about numbers. The numbers yeah, right. matter. How many? What's the percentage? Right. It really doesn't work like that. Truthfully, yeah. it really doesn't. Like I can. There's there are months that I'm Personal. called five photographers a day and we're bidding like crazy, and then there are months where there's just a dry spell, 
and and yeah. it's just it's the you have to understand that the business is cyclical and it goes through cycles based on so many things from weather contingencies straight <laughs> on you know we're on the east coast now the weather's yeah. not been pretty here so a lot of people are going shooting west coast on a lot of their jobs at the beginning of the season because our winter kind of sucks <laughs> so it's like they've got to start you know you, you're it's the business is cyclical and you've just got to remember be out there be great all the time don't ever lower the bar and be out there often and meet with people a lot people hire who they know and who they see they don't hire some vacuous you know link on a site somewhere so be out there and be engaged in your world questions so is everyone comfortable around what a treatment is everyone know what that is Anyone not know? Okay, good. So we don't have to discuss that. Okay. I think they will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If you guys All want right, examples so of, of, of well-written treatments that are, um, you know, not so, branded. So explain, can... Joe. Explain what a treatment is. A treatment is, you know, clients can see the work that you do in the breadth of your portfolio. But as it applies to the concept that they're executing, they want to know how, what's your, what's your approach to casting? You know, when you see the comps and they talk about the concept, they want to know, like, how would you go about finding the right people for this job? How would you light them? How would you cast for them? Would you do a video casting? Is the emotional content of the print ad so compelling and the connection between people so compelling that it's, it's enough to do a video um, casting just to see how people interact on set with each other? There are ways that they, they want you to invest them in the way they're, you're thinking about their brand. That, that their project. So it, it, it is a piece that kind of speaks a little bit to your vision, gives them examples of, of things that relate to the concept in their uh, assignment, and then breaks down that concept into its component parts. This is how I'd approach casting. Here's how I'd approach lighting. Here's how I'd approach the location scout and things that I'd be looking for. Um, and having visual samples per section, very brief, one, pages per, one page per section I think is enough with a brief you know, explanation of how you would execute that thing. Um, and then with just a bio at the end and a link and you know, a thank you. People like to be thanked, by the way, for looking at these things. Jenna, how, how important is a treatment to you guys? You're going away for two weeks with, uh, with a potential photographer and you know, what do you want to know? Well, let's back up for a second uh, because you mentioned an interesting word. You said client. So in the advertising world, as the art director, I realized that I am technically as here's the photographer, here's the first client, which would be me, but I have a client. Right. So my <laughs> clients are over there. I have to figure out how to sell you. So just to build off of when I I have to triple bid or I have to double bid, so I need to take those books to the client. I have to sell your work to the client. So sometimes I actually wind up rebuilding the book sometimes because I know if I really want to work with somebody, then if they're the right person, then I need to do whatever I need to do to get that book in front of the client in the right way. But then the treatment also does help me sell to the client because I don't, the way I work personally, and again, you could ask a lot of different art directors and they would have a different style. I'm looking for someone who is going to not just take the comp that I just built and execute exactly that, unless that is what my client has asked me for. I am specifically looking for somebody who is going to bring their vision in pl plus the work that the client has approved. If they're not plussing it, then I'm thinking, okay, then we should just we should just buy stock or something. So really, that's what the treatment is for because it's going to tell me what your vision as a photographer is to take this comp and take it to the next level and make it something extra. So now you're going into that client meeting. You have the three books, mm -hmm. the what, and the treatments. Mm -hmm. You're going in with a first choice, mm -hmm. right? And most of the times we don't get to the third book, right? I would no, think. Yeah. Oh, you do. Yeah, for everything. Okay. I do. All right. So, yeah, but, 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 but you. But, 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 no, but do you, do you go in and bias is the wrong word, but you go in with the first choice. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, how do we become, is it, is it solely what's in that portfolio that makes me the first choice? No. Okay. So, what is it that makes me the first, is it, or the combination of everything? It's a big combination, and again, this is, uh, this is another personal thing. My work ethic uh, will drive how I approach a project, and so I would expect a certain work, e a 
excuse me, a certain work ethic from the people that I'm going to be working with, a certain energy or a certain attitude. And I'm also very clear that, to your example, I'm going to be with you on set for 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours, how many ever days. And I'm thinking about how the people that I choose to put on my team are going to be part of that team. Because I also know my client, too, and I know it's going to rain. We're going to have this problem. There's a hurricane. I don't know, whatever it is. And I need to know that, ooh, we're nine and a half hours in and we can't go into overtime and I've got 20 minutes to get this thing. And I need to know that whoever I've hired isn't going to lose it, isn't going to have a nutty, is a problem solver. And I could go on and on and on because that would be my personal list. But again, so it's part of the package. Who you are as a person, how do you work, when do you work, what's your... So it's also just about putting the right team together as much as it is about the actual, the actual result. So part of that is yeah. the way we've communicated with you. Me being the rep, sure. the photographer, all, right. of, all of that is, that, so that whole process that may have taken two or three weeks, yep. you're sizing us up on every phone call, every correspondence, the estimate has to be revised. We're easy about doing that. All of those things, right. that is part of this process. Yeah. Art is the process. I mean, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> it's the doing is the art. I mean, you still get a piece of paper at the end of the day. You still get this image. But how you got there, that is, that's, that's why we're here. So, yeah. Okay. Question? Any question? Okay. So what is the most annoying thing? that we do oh my God. that and keep it you know a short list <laughs> right. um that you know you find like you know i wish i wish this wasn't like sort of the process mm. um, i mean it just it could be whimsical it doesn't yeah. have to be you know, hardcore serious but you know just things that you know within within the agency you, you know everyone like bitches about that oh that's different okay <laughs> i'll let you answer Ta that take question one of them. <laughs> You answer well, me. I'm I'm outside the agency. So no, that's fine. What, <laughs> editorial, what's going on in the magazine? So when I'm standing yeah. outside of the your building waiting for you <laughs> and with a portfolio in right. hand, do you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Did that bother you? Maybe not that. Right. Um, so one, I mean, again, this is is a lot of personal um, personal things right now. But um, one of one of the biggest things or hardest things for me to deal with is is getting a phone call that interrupts my day. So that that is something that um, is really hard for me because that's not what my workflow is like. Um, if you want to send me an email and ask for a call, totally do that. Um, but I kind of just, like, I need to be prepared for this thing that's about to be in front of me. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. my biggest annoyance. Okay. If you want to call it that. Joe? I, I've, that's a twofold answer. So when photographers are promoting to meet for representation, is that where we're going? Okay. So big pet peeve, you will get shut down immediately. If your email looks like dear, like template, and my name is in there, or like there's like, if it looks that like that opening line is like dear photo rep or any version wow. of that, that you get shut down. It doesn't matter how good the work is because it's just not personal. You don't know anything about me. You haven't researched my agency. You're not thinking about what I do every day. So if, you're, if you show that you're not thinking, that's, you're out. It's just, because it, then that translates across everything else about you, in my opinion. Um, again, remember I said to you earlier, marketing and promotion is your life. It's the lifeblood of why you will succeed in this business. It's that important. That's why I illustrated that whole opening ridiculous example. But the reason that I did that is because all those things matter to people that are paying attention. Yeah. So, um, and then the other thing is um, being part of like some kind of spammy moment. And I think photographers have to be really, really careful about how many times they send out emails. And also, your, um, the, I, and I can go into this further, but when you are soliciting just as a marketing thing, right, if you guys are soliciting to agencies, if you've got a list that's built out and you're m emailing multiple people at that agency, you better stagger the emails because that will get blocked, spam noted. Like, mm -hmm. if you've got 50 people at an ad agency that you want to send to, you've got to stagger them and you've got, there's like rules of how you can email that. So be mm -hmm. careful with your e-promotion because you will be, you'll be blocked and made a spam, you know, and, and it's just not, it's not a good, it's not a good scene. 
I've had it happen to me. I've done it before. And I've made the mistakes. I've made every mistake that you've made. So don't worry about it. There's, you know, no harm, no foul. But I'm just trying to give you, you know, a heads up on that. So be careful with your e-promotions. So, Can I add one note on that? Yeah, yeah, go. Um, so one thing with um, with the email promotions that um, Joe was just talking about, um, we have a really small team um, at Time Out, so we're three people. Our, that's our whole photo team. Um, so when we each get, like, the same cookie cutter email, yeah. it's, it's very apparent. You know, right. like, we all sit next to each other. We talk to each other. Right. Um, so something that would be really cool, like, if you already have all three of our email addresses, like, Put, loop us together and talk to us as a company, so like right. as three right. people. <laughs> um, because you know, like you, you found these three people, so just talk to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So, I mean, now that you know yeah. that the three of them sit next to each other, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, how fun would that be to do something clever? Right. You know, I just sent it to her and I sent, <laughs> what is she wearing? You guys already, you know, you could do almost, you know, write a conversation out. Yeah. That, that could be fun. I love that you just or said you that because it, it yeah. totally yeah. triggers <laughs> totally triggers a story about a photographer who had a meeting. So this is going back to the meeting moment where you have that meeting and you don't get back in touch with that person for a real long time and that meeting went really, really well. So I was talking to um, a consultant. By the way, consultants, editors, build a team around your promotion. I'm just gonna say that now. So when you're getting ready to design anything, build a team around it so that you have people checking your work. The agent isn't the end all be all. You really need to have a designer, an editor, and really good people working on that stuff. But once that goes out and you have some relative success and somebody wants to hire you, they hire you on a job. You know, around the Christmas time or whatever, sometimes you invite them to dinner, take them, you know, do something, you know, special or recognize them, acknowledge that they've given you work. I think that's important. Some agencies are not able to, and there's like, you know, there's rules and regulations against that. But if you have a personal relationship with a buyer that you've worked with for years, make sure that you, you know, you just make that knock on the door and say, are you able to go out to dinner? You know, can I do that? But in the case of this one photographer, who was like, ah, you know, I didn't send that gift out and he got a really, really big job or I didn't really like take that, I didn't acknowledge that person. So the suggestion from this marketing consultant was send it in July, wrap the gift, a Christmas gift and send it in July and like set, make yourself like to your point, Frank, take notes on your meetings and like remember these little tidbits, remember the name of somebody's dog or daughter or whatever on your meetings. If you get that far in where you can really connect with a person, take time to remember, be present because people remember that more than I think sometimes a really great promotion. Because yeah. you're connecting on a different level, yeah. on a deeper level. To that point, my friend here, I don't know how we got on that topic, but oh. we both f have this thing about stamps. So whenever I go up to the agency, I always give her stamps. So whenever I go to the post office, Excellent. I give her, you know, Thank some you. new stamps. No, you and it's, it's just, you haven't? No, I remember why. It was because you had said, we had met, and then you had said, hey, I'm going to send you this thing. And you just happened to use 25 stamps to send me the thing. I don't even remember what was in the thing, what was in the package. I've done that. And I saved the package because I was like, oh, my God, these stamps are great. I was putting them in my collection. No, but the, 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 there had to be something about our conversation that I sent you all those stamps. Maybe, but then I sent you, but then again, that's, I think, that builds that connection, whether it's that personal bit or sending it in July. Again, there are no mistakes. I mean, maybe you think it's a mistake, but you know, shoot, we're creating something beautiful. We're creating art, we're creating creative something or other, whatever you want to call it. So there's really no mistakes. It's about how you recover from a perceived mis mistake. And even if you, and I do this myself all the time, one of my favorite tips, and so if any of you get one of these emails from me, you'll know. I'll be like, oh my God, from the department of better late than never. You know, I don't care if it's six months later. It's like, shoot, I got to send you this thing. Not communicating or acknowledging that you said something or you missed something or whatever it was. It's just like, it's about resilience. So yeah. you get to decide how you're going to be resilient with what you perceive to be a missed opportunity or a blown moment. And then you make it a positive, however you do that. And this is totally, and so now this has become a thing. It's a thing. Now, which is really kind of cool. So then you have you a thing. Send stamps. These That's are really great, space. too. They were really great. Because it's spring. Yes, they're stamps. great. Stamps. I know, right? Everybody can see these, right? We have a question. Spring. Oh, we have a question. Hi. Hey, I'm a photographer for 40 years, and I shoot film sometimes. And uh, 
my body of work is a personal body of work over an extended period of time. So do people ever send in, you know, come in and, and show actual prints? Question one. Yeah. Two, do you ever shoot with film and digital? And three, um, can, can the website work, you know, speak for itself? Like, you know, I have a link to my best work. Can that get through the door? I mean, you know what? Mm -hmm. Are any of those relevant? Uh, yes to all of this, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. I shot film, it was a couple years ago, but we specifically, we shot film and digital. And I get, I get people will show me prints, you know. Um, everybody, it's again, it's your vision about how you're, and again, this is from an advertising perspective. Uh, and it's also from my personal perspective. I, ap I appreciate that. If you ask that same question to a series of other art directors, you may get a different answer. You're going to ask a rep. They're going to say, you know, give you something different. A photo editor is going to maybe say something different. So that's just from here, that answer. And, uh. and Z, I'd like your card at the end of the show. Oh, right. There we go. <laughs> okay. So Thank you. Another th to, to that type of a question, will you read photo magazines and see a story that's compelling, the image is compelling, and you get a little feel for that photographer, will that work for you guys as well to reach out? Yeah. Right? I mean, like a National Geographic piece or mm -hmm. uh, something in Photo District News about this photographer took this project and mm -hmm. did this. Mm -hmm. Does that work for you, Joe, finding somebody? Yeah, it's yeah. especially if the article is about process, mm -hmm. like your process, mm -hmm. and your humanity. Like right. if you can bring some element of, it's not just, because look, it's like, otherwise it's just a promotion. Otherwise it's just another way to sell. So like, I really like to read articles that are about things that make you tick, you know? And it can be odd and crazy. We have photographers that are in Austin and you know, Austin's thing is like, keep it weird. You know, the Voorhees. And they're like, they've got, they raise bees, you know, uh, you know, in their backyards. And people kind of know these traits about them. And to me, when I, when I heard that, I was like, they raise bees? Let's sign them. Let's go. <laughs> like, where's the contract? Um, so it's just like when I read articles that have something special about your work but are less about, like, the work and a little bit more about your process and who you are as a human being, that makes me want to know you. Because I, I got to spend a lot of time with you. You know, we go through marketing edits and all of these different things. And if I don't like you, I can't rep you. Like, literally, if I can't sell you like you were my brother, then I don't want to be on, on – I don't want you at the agency. I really need to be – we're so close. You know? Yeah, it's a very intimate world. It's a great point. Um, from an editorial side, to answer um, your question, um, we have our cover and feature shoots will sometimes um, have a, a film aspect if the photographer likes to shoot. Um, and that it just kind of makes it extra special when we get to work with them. Um, and then we get to use that online and, and kind of talk about like this photographer using film. You know, like it's it seems like this. Um, really uh just yeah just really special so joe do you want to show that piece oh yeah um oh. can i just touch on one thing real quick i promise sure. it won't be long sure guys um this is working for us as an agency now too because we also as agents don't know if what we're doing is working so we use consultants to help our agency so there are consultants out there that you know i think is really important to get your brand right and I just want to just quickly summarize some things. If you haven't been thinking about these things, to create all of this momentum, you should be thinking about these things. So how do you describe yourself in three sentences? Is there a target audience for your work? Is there an aesthetic to your brand? Is there a visu any visual attributes to be aware of that identifies you? What do you think clients say about you? Be aware of that. Be present to that. What, what, if, if somebody were to ask you like, what somebody else thinks of you, be ready to answer that question. Like, What do you think other people think of you? Because mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot of inward looking. Um, what's most memorable about you? Like literally, what's most memorable about you the person and you the work? Um, who are your competitors? Do you know the competitive landscape that you're in? If you don't know the competitive landscape, you're going to be knocking your head against the wall on your promotions because you don't know who the guys are to the left or to the right of you that are in your, in your, in your area, in your marketing zone. Um, what do you envy most about your competitors? When you look at other people's work, 
be vulnerable enough to be like, God, I wish I could do that. How do I get to that lighting? How do, he composes, you know, in such a way. Like, be aware of what you envy the most in other people's work and, and see how that can be integrated into what you do, you know? Um, outside of this business, what are your favorite brands and why? So instead of looking at other uh, photographers, look at brands that you're interested in. See what they're doing. Identify those. What, when you close your eyes, what do you look like as a brand? What do you look like? What do you feel like? What's your color? You know, what's your texture? Um, who are your industry heroes and why? It's just important to have like reference on where you came from. So you can even talk about that in conversation in a meeting. You know, what inspired you to get into photography? People like to hear those personal anecdote anecdotal moments. Um, and how do you want to be remembered? When you do your promotion, remember at the beginning of it, think about the end of it. So at the beginning of like creating it, think about how you want somebody to be left with, how it impacts them. So begin with the end in mind. That's and, uh, and I, I think that could be summed up, something I always say, be interested and be interesting. You know, that's gonna take you very, very far in all aspects of the communication with the people you're trying to reach that you get it, you want more, they want to give you more. Really, really important. Yeah. So and guys, just in terms of promotion, um, so this is an, uh, not completely uh, edited yet, but it just came out of the editing room and I just wanted to share it because it illustrates, we have a photographer that shoots animals in motion and in still, and his name is Brian Stege. He, of all of the people that we've done promotions, Brian's done some really exquisite things. It's up on the photo editor. What we're doing now is a new promotion called Dudley's New Bowl. And Brian is an avid lover of dogs. So he's got his Instagram feed is called The Daily Doctioned, and it's all about doctions and dogs. His um, newest video is kind of out of the editing room, and I want to share that with you. And to that point, this is how special the promotion got. So Dudley is his dog, and one day he realized that the dog bowl was kind of ratty and... Well, and, oh, and don't give it away. Let's watch it. Well, we'll watch it, but <laughs> I, want, I want you to pay attention to the details of this because it's all wrapped up into the end promotion.
All right, so what are we going to do now, Joe? <laughs> cry. Cry. That's what we're going to do. Um, so that promotion is going out for Brian to 50 of the top creative directors that work in the space of animals um, on dog food and uh, pet health care. And how did, you, how did you find the uh, clients? Uh, well curated lists. So the other thing that I wanted to make sure that you knew about the in terms of generating your lists and promotion, first of all, looking at communication arts to find out what creatives are doing what campaigns is really really important especially in the like when you want to research a topic specifically finding out the creatives that are winning awards in those areas are the ones that you kind of want to research and really build that list to be curated well this is an expensive promotion um and it's taken months to kind of put together that was just the first edit of the, the motion piece and so to build it out we really looked at clients that have called us, you know, and we've worked with on jobs. We work on Yukonuba and IAMS and a bunch of other. So we found those creatives that we worked with on those jobs that we wanted to keep in touch with. And then we researched, you know, Mars is the parent, you know, company to a lot of so different. So you use agency access? A oh, agency access, yeah. But in, in other words, we meshed things that we already knew and were effective and people that were in the conversation with us about Brian's work. And then we added to that the top creatives that are working in the space of anything animal photography. And so we developed a 50 person list. Um, that bowl will have inserted in it three production picks of Dudley's creation of the bowl, which will be a stills version of, of what's going on. Um, it'll have a, a uh, flash drive with the video on it, a portfolio of dogs and animals of all kinds in it, and a contact page. And it'll be wrapped up in that cellophane in the box and that goes out to you know people, and a letter um, from Dudley to the creative director about why he wanted to do it, what compels him so much to do it, and uh, you know a request to stay in touch at right. the end. And of Jenna, it. you get that. What, what is that? What's your call to action? Well, Ho hopefully she liked it because I'm, otherwise, I'm, epic fail. On well, this. no, and I'm just laughing because I'm thinking, wow, it'd be great if I worked on dog food, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't work on dog food. You know, it would be. It would be exciting. Let's just walk through the process. You would get this box. You would open it up. It would be really exciting. And then, of course, I would think, oh, now I need to go get a dog. Well, that the interesting really thing is, <laughs> wait, the bowl, the bowl is actually a ceramic bowl that can be used as a dog bowl, or it can be used in, like, you can use oh, it as a salad, as a salad no, bowl. I should be used for a dog bowl. <laughs> I know, right, exactly. You want to use it for <laughs> its purpose. Yeah. Um, no, so then I, I would reach out. I mean, definitely the first thing I would do would be to send a thank you, because I do that. Awesome. <laughs> That's rare. Thank you notes. Uh, so I would send a thank you note, and it would be a combination thank you note, keep me posted, I want to see more work if you have additional imagery, or in the case of this, it would be, okay, do you have an additional films, and let's just, you know, continue to keep in touch. Oh, by the way, I've got something coming up, or as a way to also say thank you, if there's something else that I know, I may pass that on to you. Yeah. So how do you measure success jobs. Yeah. with that promotion piece? That's a good point. Ooh, um, it's not measured necessarily by the job, and it's, no, no, and this is and, and yeah. how I measure success in anything in this in this day and age is did I do my job in creating a connection right. with you, a co like a broader conversation. I'm a follow up. I'm a follow up person. There's people that I know for 20 years that are mm -hmm. in my and a lot of them, and I follow up with them f fairly regularly. So for me, um, creating that connection that gives us a point to have a meeting, a meeting, um, and it couldn't be just an e-meeting at the very beginning, it could just be a mm -hmm. conversation on as an email. But then you take, you kind of sow the seed of that over time and kind of, they will stay in touch if the promotion really hits them mm -hmm. in, in the place, yeah. the heart space and their creative space. I think that people respond to that and they remember that. So there's not one person that I haven't done a promotion of that nature to that hasn't you know, been converted to either a friend, a mm. client that I've worked mm -hmm. with, or whatever. But again, it's not 5,000 cards going out over a cycle. It's 50 people yeah. that I specifically know what they're doing. We know the brands that they've worked on. We know a sample of, their, of, a, of, of a project that they've done. That's the level of connection that I'm talking about. So I've taken the time to do my research about them, and that ch comes across in the promo. I think that's the most effective way you can be right now. Mm -hmm. And it's successful. Are you nimble enough to do another 50? Can you do that? Mm. Mm. Uh, nimble in terms of following it up with, a, with the consistency No, it was successful. You got three jobs out of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved it. Everyone, everyone actually went to the site or used the flash drive, watched the video. This was really successful. We should do it again right now. Mm. For other... 
Yeah, another 50. Get yeah. another 50. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. It, uh, the success for me is just generating interest, honestly. If we do get three jobs out of it, that's amazing. But if we get like 20, you know, thank yous or an engagement from like five really of the top people that we wanted to use, that's an effective campaign to me. If t 50 people give me five people that I actually now have a relationship with, that's like money in the bank. But more importantly, it's, it's, um, it's rare to have that level of connectivity with somebody in the business. So when I know that we're, we're engaged and we're talking and you know, it's a you know, weekly email, a bi-weekly email, just like, what are you doing? What, because these people have been curated for the brands, the dog food brands and the cat food brands. Mm -hmm. that they're, so they've always, they're in that conversation all the time. So they're in that conversation with me. That's the, the beauty of it being so targeted and so specific. And how, what is the challenge to your photographer, we should do this? We're going to spend X amount of money. This is more than the norm. You know, guarantee me, Joe, a return. Right. Uh, I don't guarantee anything in this. Place. No, I know, <laughs> but I'm saying yeah. that photographer but, but, has to I be think thinking. Our, our people know yeah. that. Yeah. I think our people in the agency are enrolled in the idea that um, success is in this business where there's, you know, it's constantly evolving and constantly changing. But they get sad. The difference about it being successful is less about them and more about putting something into the world that they're proud of. Mm -hmm. And that's for us, that's how we really curate our artists. So yes, they want it to be powerful, but there have been promotions that we've done that were super expensive that we didn't get a return on investment all, mm -hmm. you know, quickly in the first year. Yeah. The second year something happens or somebody remembers something, you know, they find the promotion piece or whatever. So, but for me, you know, as an agent, I want to walk with something that I can be proud of. I want to put something out into the world. I want to have a meeting with somebody like you that I can put my book in front of you or put a promotion in front of you guys and, and have you go like, I don't, I don't even have anything for you right now, but I am so moved by this. I'm so inspired by this that I want to stay in touch with you. For what, Maybe it's this agency. Maybe it's I'm going to move to another firm and I want to keep you on my radar. That, is, to me, it's everything. And right. what is your percentage of... How much did you pay as part of that uh, promotion piece? Brian did that promotion by himself. All That's himself. all 100% so him. all the promotions that you send out, it's on them with your direction? Under our direction, sometimes we'll contribute. We'll, we contribute. We do a lot of our own advertising as well, just so you're clear. We as yeah, an yeah. agency have a marketing plan that we do not bill the photographers back for. That's really abundant. It's six promos, well-designed in a year. Uh, you know, 2,500 cards that go out to a well-curated list. There's follow-up. There's an assistant working on all of our social feeds, bringing in, you know, uh, submitting their work to blogs all the time, work that's curated for specific blogs. So we are extremely proactive in supporting the photographers. But if you want to do a special piece like that, you know, we ask that you do that at your, on your own dime because we are we're contributing in a very big way. And, and he, he came up with that whole idea, the bowl. Yes, the, God, the bowl. yes. That's why I love him. That's why I love him. He's like, and honestly, every piece of it is joy for him. It's like when somebody's spirit is married to the work that they do, it comes across in the work. It comes across on how they feel about it while they're doing. Never a complaint, always just joy. When you can create from that space, it just doesn't make it work anymore. It's fun right. to represent him. It's fun to show the work. I, I want to be cool, you know, I want to be cool, perceived as cool, but I also want to be perceived as like, I've got a family of people around me that were like supporting each other and, and whatever. And that's, that's, um, that's Brian. Mm -hmm. Great. Janet, a final thought, Janet? A final what? Thought. Yes, this goes back to your question about the pet peeves, um, okay. which I think is a great question to ask because that is about the communication. So if you are meeting with somebody and you, everybody here is trying to get their book in front of somebody, when you, um, you know, don't be afraid to ask somebody how do they like to work when you're approaching a job. I always ask whoever I'm working with, I say, how do you like to work? Let's, let's talk about the how and then we'll get to the what. So don't be afraid to ask about that and then don't be afraid to ask when you're doing a portfolio review tell me what you really think of my book. I've been to, I don't even know how many portfolio reviews and I get very, very, very few people who say they show the book and then they just kind of sit there. So as a photographer, don't be afraid to say, what do you think? Tell me what you think. Give me an unvarnished answer. 
ask, ask the question. So don't be afraid to open your mouth. That would be my last piece of advice. Um, I, I also want to reiterate that. Um, that's something that um, is really interesting to me. The people that ask me, especially specific questions about photos in portfolio reviews, are the people that I remember. They're also usually right. the people that will follow right. up. Right. Um, right. But like asking general questions like, do, do you like this? Or like, what do you like about this is, is a little bit difficult. Um, so in those kind of situations, I, I appreciate questions that are more specific about the lighting or the composition or um, the, the work as a whole. Um, and then just from an edit side, um, I know we've kind of talked about the marketing a little bit here and there and working on the weekly schedule like one week feels like a month um, for us sometimes mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid to follow up um, I really appreciate um, connecting with photographers um, again and again and like just remind me that you're there like maybe I am looking for someone to fill this project and I just happened to forget that we connected um, so so remind me that you exist and, and continue to show me your work and, and be excited when you shoot new things. That's something that I always really love. Like, I just finished this project. What do you think of it? Or um, this is what I'm working on now. Can you offer any advice? Things like that are just really nice. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I think this is more for you, Radine. Sure. Um, what percentage? of your magazine on a weekly basis is things that you assign to photographers as opposed to things that you source from other places. Mm -hmm. And um, how far in advance do you schedule them? And sure. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a really good one. Um, so we, I would say we're probably, it's always so hard. I would say between like, a third and a half that I'm assigning. Um, it is very dependent on the section that I'm working on. So um, food and drink almost entirely assigned every single week. Um, so that's something, if you're a food photographer, <laughs> reach out. Um, so so that's that was kind of the first bit. Um, we're also we're also sourcing, and sometimes it's press images. Um, we have a lot of events that we cover, so um, that kind of lumps into the, the found imagery. Remind me of your second question. <laughs> uh, how far in advance? Oh, how far in advance, thank you. Um, usually uh, between one and five days. Um, wow. <laughs> so it can be, it can be crazy. Um, again, especially in the eating and drinking sections, um, we'll find out that a restaurant is opening and it's this week, you know, so. Um, so it's it's pretty quick turnaround for features and cover. Like we have a little bit more time, um, usually weeks to a month or so. Um, we aren't usually going beyond that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Other questions? So that's it. Cool. Great. Thank so I'd you like guys. to thank again uh, the Photo Brigade <laughs> for uh, having us.